next speaker is Phil Boyle for, from uh, Greenway Housing. Phil will talk about how well the houses produced in the factory have performed in Christchurch, and he's also going to share with us how um, the house in the recent competition the placemakers, uh, won the Placemakers Supreme Award and the Registered Masters Builders 2011 competition. Please go, Phil, and we'll welcome. Thank you. Just uh, while Michael's sitting up there, um, just I'll be, you know, I get the press now just to keep up with developments, but um, like Brendan said on the front page was talking about smelling the money and just on a few, few bankers saying rebuilds set to spawn the Cantabrian. You know, and what it's got is a picture of a house in Queensland, you know, they've all built on piles because they have floods. And um, really, you know, my, my question today is, um, you know, how are we building in regards to earthquakes um, and sustainability, you know? I mean, Queensland didn't put them all back on the concrete pads on the flat ground and have them all flat regularly. Are we rising to the challenge in, um, in Christchurch? You're a family business. My father's 85 year old and he recently got his um, heavy traffic device to help deliver stuff around town for the team <laughs> and uh, to deliver to our rural sites. And I've been, I've been uh, with him 35 years there. Um, background, I think, to Christchurch and earthquakes and sustainability is a lot of the buildings to me um, seem to protect the occupants but ultimately need a demolishing. And yet, amidst that, there are some buildings that you know, just carried on like nothing had happened. Um, and so that sort of approach of having to demolish something even though it looked good and protected the occupants, um, I don't know, I think it's, it's an area we need to, um, to, to really look at. Um, a friend of mine who's a builder in Christchurch has done top-end houses all his life out of permanent materials, you know, and he's, he's a real perfectionist, drives all the people he, he works with nuts, hasn't had a house to survive, you know. He's going to have to rethink his whole approach to building, you know, because he's been permanent materials, everything's got to be solid and concrete tiles, and, and so he's um, now rethinking things. Um, building in wood, um, you know, we've got the uh, building over in um, the LVL building people. Um, we use a product called um, Golden Edge, and, and that's um, it's called Golden Edge Thin Line, made out of Nelson Marlborough Forestry, and that performs really, really um, well in, in earthquake situations. I had friends in a house in Christchurch um, out towards Kaipoi. On the 22nd of December, after all the repairs were done, they moved back into the, into the rebuilt house. And on the 23rd of December last year, another earthquake, all their plasterboards cracked and they've got to start all over again. So, um, so are we going to keep going more of the same, or where does wood fit into this? <coughs> this um, had some cust uh, customers in Christchurch 27 years ago, we built a house for, that's in the background. That's the neighbouring house up the drive, permanent materials, rock solid, nothing could ever go wrong. Um, that house, you know, you can see the red sticker on the windows there, just abandoned basically, and you, you, you just go around, that's on the top of Clifton Terrace, um, in summer, I couldn't believe when I got up there how bad it was, I thought I'd seen bad areas around the rest of Christchurch, but I got up onto the Clifton Terrace, sun the hill, and it just seemed to take a huge thump. And up this driveway, um, yeah, the houses are a very sorry state. That's another one in summer, you know, those lovely permanent materials, last a lifetime. That's this house next door to where we built, and you'll see the concrete just to, just to, you know, just completely, basically exploded, it's all smashed to bits. That's up in Clifton Terrace, I just couldn't believe when I drove around. I googled it afterwards and saw that pristine neighbourhood. Um, it was a lovely neighbourhood up there, and um, now just a lot of abandoned houses and Look fairly derelict. That particular house I saw on the um, uh, Google, and, and it looked really, you know, it was an attractive neighbourhood. Earthquakes and sustainability. The Glenroy house. Uh, here's an email that this customer sent me about the house. 
they're the second owners, and um, that would be for quite a while. Um, this is what they sent an email to me when they found out who built it. If you're ever in town and want to pop in and have a look, you're most welcome. As Karen probably mentioned to you, we put an extension on the house eight years ago um, at the back. So that's that, the wing off the back there. And um, so the place has quite a different look to the place uh, now. But in saying that, the original structure, except the garage, is still exactly the same. The extension was standard framing and plasterboard and has sustained a bit of damage, quite a bit of damage. So within the one property, it is a story of two tales. The undamaged original structure and the damaged standard building system. A great advert for your product. Thanks again, Richard. So yeah, we, we have a post and beam timber structure. And um, yeah, so they, their life can basically carry on like nothing's happened. And they said to me when I went down and visited them that they want to be taken out of the place in a box because of all the dramas they see with all their neighbours, they can just carry on. All they have to do is strip out the back piece and, and um, put some more plasterboard on. But I'm going to get you to rebuild it. <laughs> they had been going to, they're looking at building another house as a holiday home and they've been sending us a few emails on that, yeah. Can factory build housing gain market acceptance? And Brendan sort of alluded that the team have got to get in and, and push. And in New Zealand it has been quite a challenge, I can allude to that, because when we had an idea 35 years ago about developing a factory built housing system, it's, it's quite an uphill battle. And actually, I was just thinking while I was sitting down here earlier um, about the perceptions of factory-built housing. Um, that, I mean, would Toyota build their um, latest Lexus model on the side of a hill in the sounds under you know, a few tarpaulins and expect to get the quality? But in New Zealand, we probably have the other thing. People would think, oh, factory-built house, you know. So the perceptions are sort of almost back to front. And um, so that's something we have, uh, there's been a, a real challenge over the years. And yet you see, there was a TV program on an English built house that built a half German house. I don't know if you remember seeing it. And I mean, they are <coughs> factory built houses and that end of the woods are viewed as a premium home. So they're not battling that perception. Perhaps in New Zealand, we're more, you know, would, people would more think of trailer parks uh, for factory built housing. So there's the house there, it's not derelict, it's just uh, carrying on like, um, you know, life has barely changed for them. That was the interior. They said one mistake they made was just putting a new kitchen in with a granite bench top because it just blew apart. So they said if we'd stuck with the old remu top that you had in there, we would have been fine. But that bench just um, yeah, shattered in the earthquake. The lady who was at home said you just would not believe the explosion that happened. Um, that day. <coughs> Where about the site? Is it on Clifton Terrace? On no, Clifton Terrace, Panorama Road. Yeah, yeah. 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 right on the top. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was part of the problem. That that's, the houses up there are built on rock, and there was just no liquefaction give. It was just a just yeah. an explosion, really. Um, yeah. So the challenges. Well, for us, one of the perceptions, breaking down the perceptions. Um, we entered a Master Builders House of the Year competition um, sponsored by Placemakers in 2004. We had a, some Dutch customers and they, they didn't have the perception that Kiwis have about factory built homes. And this is what we came up with, with working with them. Um, they, had, they, they believed that a factory built home could be <coughs> quite stunning. And we entered it in the House of the Year competition and um, we won that category in that particular price range. That shows what you can do with wood. I said to the engineer, look, we might have to do a steel portal frame out the front. He said, no, you guys will handle, we'll do something with the wood. And he came up with a system of all interlocking and tying, um, dovetail together like an old fashioned joiner would do. And um, that gives the lateral loading. So you can do some pretty good things with with wood, and you'd never achieve that by doing it on site. You need a factory to, to do all that preparation. That was um, it was a difficult site, so we had to squish the house up and put some of it upstairs. So that's the main living quarters. The place has three kitchens, 
has a guest wing on each side with a kitchen in, and that's the main living area. You'll see up top there behind some glass doors is the main bedroom, and another living area and office just up the stairs on the mezzanine floor. Yes, yeah, so that's that's the view out of their bedroom and their um, their lounge out there. Then um, I had another set of overseas couple uh, who uh, aren't residents here, but they're allowed to come for six months of the year. And we built them a house in the Mahau Sound, just around the corner from this one. And after they moved in, they came and hounded me about entering in the House of the Year competition. And I sort of hadn't got round to it on the last day before the entry. They came and said, well, pay for it if you'll go. I said, no, 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 I'll get on to it. You know? So the last day I entered the house. And, um, it was just a fairly simple um, little house, and that was it, a factory built wooden house. And we, so we entered it in the House of the Year competition, and it was in the 350 to 450,000 price range. And um, we, at the uh, start of the awards night, there's 600 people up in the Langham Hotel there, and we were just blown away out of 19 in our category of finalists. We, um, we won, so we sit, sat back and relaxed and then watched all the multi-million dollar homes come up. And um, then at the end of the evening there's a big drum roll and the Minister of Housing says, and the big award tonight goes to, and you know, sort of said, oh, it wouldn't be us because we're, you know, just the small guys with a factory built house. And bang, there was our name up on the lights there and up on the screen, and so we were just completely done for it, really. That the house, such a... Um, you know, at the lower end of the price range, and factory built, and all out of wood, could could get there. So does that make it easier? Yeah, I think I think it's breaking down perceptions. Yeah. Is it a is it a um, two year journey? No, it's not. It's a thirty five year journey. That's the um, just it's a simple little house faces south. I had to be careful with the design because we have a cabin on the other side of the bay and have to look at it. So I said, you know, <laughs> to, you know, when he was giving me his budget, I said, look, you know, I don't want to look at a tin garage on the other side of the thing. You've got to give me some freedom. Anyway, that was the very first drawing I did, figuring out how to get the whole thing to work on a south-facing site. He regularly rings me up when they're, when they're over and they're due to come over. Um, in the beginning of November, he rings me up and says, I've just seen your cabin, it's gone out of the sun. Well, he's in the sun for two more hours, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, after me berating him about the south-facing site and how difficult it would be. <laughs> so there's the timber house. It's um, just a big long box with an angled wall to um, give the bracing, uh, because it's just a 100% wall of glass on the south side facing the sea. And the kitchen's sort of just a freestanding kitchen that then you open all the doors up, it's, it's virtually outside. Blackwood flooring is from the Millens plantation in the Mahaka Power. So it's it's all local, it all came from a very um, small area. So just a few finishing touches. Yeah, it's stunning timber that, that blackwood. It's a very, very nice timber. Um, we have a perfectionist who laid the floor and, and the owner stood over him and said that uh, he had the lay with some gaps in it because he didn't want anyone to think it was a plastic floor. <laughs> <laughs> that was the design. Yeah. I wonder why the, when the judges turned up, there was a Warren Amoni architect and, and, and they spent three hours there. Well, that's very strange and the previous things have sort of been in and out in a very short time. Some of the, um, the, the, the description by the judge was said it had extraordinary environmental awareness. And um, some of the things were, you know, regarding the wood cladding. It's an interlocking timber system that we've designed ourselves. Um, and the um, sun angles, the simplicity, you know, less is more. The timber decks and placement, blackwood floor, and our unique um, factory build system where you can you can achieve a lot more accuracy um, through doing as much as you can in the house, uh, in the in the factory. That shows you in the summer how um, how it works. There's a big enough overhead to cut out all the summer sun, but in the winter it just is flooded with with sunlight. 
It's the indoor outdoor flow, and uh, it's just a great place, great place to be. The good thing with timber construction and um, the piles, brilliant system there. Eh? Um, just shows how lightly a timber building can sit on a site. Now, obviously, neighbours down the sound spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in site works, and I don't know that they've really achieved a lot more. If the big one hits here, um, I think they have a lot more remedial work to do. So it sits very lightly on the site. Nightfall in the sounds, a great place. <coughs> it's a south facing bedroom, but some light up above. Um, comes across the top of a little ensuite bathroom to bring uh, sun and warmth in the winter. They have a guest bunk for when their friends come out from England. It's like a container with a rage slider in it down below. This is something um, for, for Christchurch really, that, and for the wood industry, you know, how do we convert design attention and how do we get some action at the other end. And, um, you know, I've got a lot of customer expectations, their dreams and aspirations. Then there's the limitations of the site and a price is going to be their budget. So how can we squeeze that? And then you've got to multiply it by you know, a lot of things, site attributes, selection of materials. Well, I think wood is a fantastic medium to build out of. Um, and right at the end there's the X factor. And if you can combine all of those things and then put X factor on it at the end, then I think you know, you've, you've really got an exceptional um, client experience. So that's the challenge for us wood people and how we approach that and how we work, how we can work it with Christchurch. Well, that was the very end. Um, after we won the House of the Year, that they, 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 uh, um, a film team came down and and did some um, filming down there and they wanted to do some at night as well so after they'd done the daytime stuff we waited for night and I had, happened to fall asleep on my customer's deck and they took a photo of me <laughs> enjoying my dose of vitamin D <laughs> and that was the, uh, at the very end of the day when the sunset finally came the English customers were emailing and they say we, they call it home and they said we just can't wait to get home and catch up with you so the, uh, the, um, that house is going to be featured on CVNZ, Heartland, Channel 17, it's a Sky Channel and now the dates, and then on Prime TV at that time. Have you got that uh, movie, is that there? <coughs> You've possibly seen it on TV. seen that on the, uh, on the TV one that's playing a lot with it, you know, promoting the master builders. Have got any questions? They actually have your name on it. <laughs> 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 Would be nice, wouldn't it? But a lot of local people do recognise it, so it's still good advertising. Yeah, the TV programme will have their name on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>